Hi, I'm Jude from HeadFi.org. Today we're going to talk about CanJam London 2018, which is happening again at the Park Plaza Westminster Bridge Hotel, a fantastic location in central London, on July 21st and 22nd, 2018. But before we get to CanJam London, I just want to remind you that we have two more CanJams this year after CanJam London, so get ready to mark these events down in your calendar and travel schedules. On October 5th through October 7th, 2018, CanJam at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest will return for the 10th year in a row at the Rocky Mountain Audio Fest in Denver, Colorado. This is a unique show because the world's best two-channel audio gear is also just a walk away from the world's best headphone audio gear at CanJam. And to end the 2018 CanJam season, on November 3rd and November 4th, 2018, we're going to Shanghai for our Shanghai Headphone Festival. That show being held at the Shanghai Marriott Hotel City Center, located in the heart of downtown Shanghai. Now, with so many head fires from China and the surrounding regions, I think that one's going to be huge, so please be sure to join us. But now let's get back to London, to CanJam London 2018, where we've got several new product launches and a lot of gear to show you. Still, as long as this video is, this is just a sampling of all you'll be able to hear and see at CanJam London on July 20th. 21st and 22nd at the Park Plaza Westminster Bridge Hotel. At CanJam London, we're in Cord Electronics' backyard. They're a short trip away in Maidstone. And Cord is coming to CanJam London absolutely loaded for bear with brand new audio electronics that are at the very top of my list of what I personally want to hear and use. Now, since the release of the first Cord Hugo, I believe that was like five or so years ago, Cord's DACs have been my reference DACs. Now, as desktop DACs go, the Cord Dave, still the flagship DAC in Cord's line, pretty much changed my view of DACs because it's incredible. The Dave is the easiest kind of audio story to tell. It sounds amazing. It measures great. Now, whenever a new headphone arrives, I still thrill to the opportunity to plug that headphone into the Dave just to hear what happens. I wondered, though, when I'd hear a DAC to rival the Dave. And the answer is now. At CanJam London, Cord Electronics is going to be letting us listen to a pre-production version of the second generation tabletop Cord Hugo. It's called the Cord Electronics Hugo TT2. While the Dave still wins the day with me for most headphones, the Hugo TT2 comes within striking distance, but then with some headphones can actually surpass its flagship stablemate. I'll get back to that in a minute. The Cord Hugo TT2 is far more than a desktop version of Cord's newest portable Cord Hugo 2, and also far more than an incremental upgrade to the original Cord Hugo TT. It actually has double the processing power of the Hugo 2, and five times that of the original Hugo TT. The Hugo TT2 is a 93,304 tap 10 element pulse array design, compared to a 49,152 tap 10 element Hugo 2, and a 23,368 tap 4 element pulse array design in the original Hugo TT. For reference, I believe the flagship Dave uses a 164,000 tap 20 element pulse array. Again, the Dave is still the flagship and sounds the part. But where the Hugo TT2 does show up its flagship sibling is with the hardest to drive headphones. Headphones like the Odyssey LCD4, Abyss AB1266, Hi-Fi Man Susvara, Hi-Fi Man HE6, headphones like those. The Hugo TT2 can output up to 288 milliwatts into 300 ohms and 7.3 watts into 8 ohms from its unbalanced outputs. And up to 1.15 watts into 300 ohms and 18 watts into 8 ohms from its balanced outputs. I plugged the Hi-Fi Man Susvara into the Cord Hugo TT2's headphone output and it was simply amazing. The best sound I've yet heard from the Susvara. Rich, full, transparent, made me think of an excellent electrostat. Now, after I get back from CanJam, I'll try it with a wide variety of in-ears and hard-to-drive over-ears to take full advantage of the Hugo TT2's low and high gain settings. Cord will also be showing the Cord T-Toby amplifier that's on the bottom here. The Cord T-Toby was designed to complement the Hugo TT and the Hugo TT2. It shares the same form factor so that they make a nice compact stack. It's designed to take advantage of the Hugo TT and TT2 as digital preamps. And its 100 watt design can drive a wide variety of loudspeakers. We only had time to try the T-Toby with the Kef LS50 loudspeakers, but yeah, it drives them very, very well. The Hugo TT2 and T-Toby make for a ridiculously capable state-of-the-art loudspeaker and headphone driving compact stack. And finally, Cord Electronics will unveil this, this here in the middle. Yeah, I know, you can't see it because we had to cover it up. We can't show it to you until day one of CanJam London. But Rob Watts will introduce this at CanJam, his new creation, and he'll also give a talk about the technologies contained, well, under here. Anyway, make sure to check out the seminar schedule to find out when. I promise to say essentially nothing about it until the show, but I will say it's what I've most been looking forward to this entire year in audio. Like I said, Cord Electronics is coming to CanJam London loaded for bear this year. Do not miss their exhibit or any of Rob's seminars. 
A few months back, I had a chance to visit Fio's offices and factory in Guangzhou, China. Now, visiting Fio is one of my audio life bucket list items. I'm a giant fan of what they've accomplished in the last several years. As I've said before, they've literally reshaped the premium personal audio landscape with high performance and outstanding engineering at generally very affordable prices. Now, I hope to be able to say more about my visit to Fio down the road, but I will say now that I was amazed by the emphasis on engineering, both software engineering and hardware engineering that's so central to the spirit of what Fio stands for. For example, their team of software engineers isn't just developing their player interfaces, they're also striving constantly to improve and fix things over time via regular firmware updates. And as far as the hardware goes, I was completely blown away. I saw everything I expected to see and then well beyond my expectations. Almost everywhere I went, there was testing of one sort or another being done. Some of you engineers watching this probably recognize some of the very cool test gear in these photos. There's a Keysight DSO-9254A, a Keysight E5071C, an Audio Precision APX555, lab-grade headphone measurement gear, and more. Look at this radio frequency anechoic test chamber. They test materials and parts as they come in. They do electronic electroacoustic, RF testing, environmental testing with a programmable temperature and humidity chamber and more. It's simply incredible. All right, all that said, let's look at some of the actual products from all that research, development, and testing. Now, the FIO product I've been using the most is their X7 Mark II player with the new AM3B amp module. Now, one of the major advantages this player has over most of the other premium digital audio players that we have here, even ones that are much more expensive than the X7 Mark II, is support for offline title storage. I travel a lot, and I like being able to store my title library locally along with my ripped and purchased downloaded music when I'm on the go. This is a very, very big deal for me. Now, of course, I love the way this player sounds too. Now in case you're wondering, the X7 Mark II's digital section is built around the ES9028 Pro DAC. Also, these new FIO FH5 flagship hybrid IEMs just arrived and first impressions are very strong. In each FH5 earpiece are four drivers, three Knowles balanced armatures and one 10mm electrodynamic driver. Now the low bass extension and presence from the FH5 is impressive. I like some emphasis down low, but I like that emphasis to taper before the lower mids are affected. With the FH5, mission accomplished, and it does it while keeping the bass fast and detailed. The FH5's midband is detailed and linear, straight down the center to my ears, not thick, not lean. I I like the sparkle up top too, the treble staying on the good side of my limits, never crossing into bright or harsh, but also never overly smooth, always with some sparkle. What a worthy flagship IEM from Theo this is, and as expected, it performs above its relatively affordable price. I'm running out of time for this segment, but I do want to make sure to also mention two other products from FIO that we've been enjoying a great deal that I'll say more about down the road and that you definitely want to check out. Now, the FIO Q5 is their new flagship Bluetooth and DSD-capable DAC and amplifier. The Q5 portable DAC amp combo can be fed via analog line-in or digitally from USB, optical, coax, lightning, WM port, or Bluetooth with Aptex and AAC. I've been using it to DAC from my iPhone, but also as a USB DAC from my MacBook. The Q5 is incredibly versatile. Also check out Fio's new and very affordable Fio M7 portable player. The M7 uses a 4-core Exynos 7270 CPU and an ES9018 QTC DAC. It's a lovely sounding, very lightweight, responsive little player that I'm thrilled supports the latest Bluetooth high-res codecs with Aptex, Aptex HD, and LDAC support. Anyway, make sure to check out Fio's entire product lineup at their exhibit at CanJam. Oh, and I definitely want to mention that FIO will be hosting a launch event and technical presentation at CanJam London on Saturday, July 21st from 12.30 p.m. to 1 p.m. in the London Seminars Room. That's on the lower ground level just above the Westminster Ballroom. To give us a hint of what's to come, they did share this graphic on the forums. Anyway, I'll definitely be there. You should be there too. Space is limited, so be sure to get there early. Abyss headphones will be at CanJam London, and they'll have the latest version of their venerable Abyss AB1266. This, the just-released AB1266 Phi CC. The AB1266 Phi CC brings a couple of key improvements to the AB1266 Phi. First of all, the CC stands for ceramic coating. On the AB1266 Phi CC, a colored polymer ceramic coating is factory applied and oven cured. Abyss headphones says that this type of coating is the hardest thin film coating available. From an aesthetic standpoint, it results in what I think is a substantially improved color color scheme. Now the finish is now a two-tone luxury matte black finish. It's like matte black and matte blacker. Absolutely gorgeous. Abyss says that this new polymer ceramic coating also improves upon the anti-resonant nature of its all-aluminum components. 
Sonically, though, the improvement with the new AB1266 5CC model is coming from the new ear pads. The new CC lambskin magnetic ear pads are physically deeper and more comfortable than the original ear pads used on the AB1266 and the AB1266 5. Now, we just received this late into our shooting schedule, but these new ear pads, they're definitely an improvement over the first generation AB1266 ones. The soundstage with these new ear pads manages to be both more airy, yet somehow less diffuse. In other words, the venue is a little bigger and the orchestra has a more corporeal presence within that venue. For a headphone platform that has, since its first version, had meatiness and impact as a core strength, that's really saying something. Now, Abyss really did a wonderful job with these new pads and current file owners. You can buy them separately to upgrade yours. I've felt since its release years ago that the Abyss AB1266 has been one of the top tier price no object headphones in the class of the LCD4s, Sisvaras, and Utopias of the world. The Abyss AB1266 5CC makes the strongest case for this now legendary headphone platform more than ever before. Abyss headphones will also have their Abyss Diana headphones at the show. Now, despite how little it looks like its larger sibling, many of the core philosophies behind the design and engineering of the AB1266 found their way into the Diana. Now, it's not as visceral as the AB1266, few headphones are, but it's still powerful in its presentation and far less cumbersome for me to tote back and forth between home and office and for travel as a hotel room headphone. Now, like its sibling, the Diana has a unique, okay, I'll say it, a strange form factor that fits well on my head, but can be challenging with some head shapes. Try it on at the show, as it's one of those that when it fits, it fits very well as it does on me, but when it doesn't, it sometimes really doesn't. It's important to know that for both the AB1266 5CC and the Diana, the ear cup fit is not typical. It's not supposed to be like every other headphone. Just make sure, though, to work with the folks at the exhibit to get the fit right, because the right fit is still important. It's no harder to put on than other headphones, but it takes a little understanding specific to Abyss headphones, but it's so worth it. Anyway, don't miss either of these Abyss Planar Magnetic Wonders at CanJam London 2018. Hi-Fi Man will be at CanJam London 2018, and they'll have several new products to listen to. All of this arrived on the very last day of our shooting for this preview video, so I only have minutes worth of first impressions to share with you about these new products, all of which will be at CanJam. Now, this is the Hi-Fi Man Shangri-La Junior Premium Electrostatic Headphone System. As many of you know, Hi-Fi Man has been showing their $50,000 Shangri-La Electrostatic Headphone System at CanJam and other audio shows all over the world for a couple of years. The Shangri-La Junior draws from their experience crafting the big Shangri-La and with a much more affordable, though still expensive, price. Like the big Shangri-La's headphone, the Shangri-La Junior's headphone also uses a submicron diaphragm that's coated with nanoparticles. It also uses statters made of a 50 micron metal mesh for greater acoustical transparency. The Shangri-La Junior's tube electrostatic amp uses four hand-matched 6SN7 tubes. hi fi Man claims are the best 6SN7s currently available. It also has a stepped attenuator volume control with a snazzy horizontal row of LEDs to show you the volume level. The design of this amp is absolutely gorgeous to me. To my eyes, it may be the best looking product hi fi Man's made so far. My first impression of the Shangri-La Junior's sound is very positive. Compared to my Stax headphones, I'd say the Shangri-La Junior's headphone is more along the lines of a Stax SR009 than an SR007, in that it's more incisive than warm, but still timbrely rich. Now, bass impacts seem very good too, and I'll be curious to do more comparisons between it and the Stax headphones we have here. Hi-Fi Man also recently released this new flagship portable digital audio player called the Hi-Fi Man R2R 2000 HD streaming audio device. I don't know a whole lot about this player yet, but I do know the following. Its DAC section is built around two Burr Brown PCM 1704K multi-bit DACs. Apparently, Hi-Fi Man purchased the last remaining batch of PCM 1704K chips. Now, I've had mere minutes with the R2R 2000, and I've used it only as a USB DAC so far. It sounds excellent driving the new Ananda, which I'll get to in a moment, and it did it with ease and a lot of drive. I think it can output a half watt per channel from its balanced output. I'll bring the R2R 2000 with me to London to get to know it better, and I'll tell you more about it later. For now, check it out for yourself at CanJam. Hi-Fi Man also sent us the new Ananda planar magnetic headphone. It looks a lot like an Edition X, but the Ananda is substantially more refined than either version of the Edition X we have here. It turns out the Ananda's diaphragm is only 20% the thickness of the Edition X's diaphragm. I need more time with the Ananda before I say much more about it, but early impressions suggest to me that the Ananda is going to give the Sundara a serious run for the best value in Hi-Fi Man's lineup. Anyway, make sure to check out the Shangri-La Junior, the R2R 2000, the Ananda, and the rest of Hi-Fi Man's extensive product lineup at CanJam London. For CanJam London this year, there are a total of only three seminar sessions over the two days, and none of them are repeated. Also, seating is limited, so plan your schedule accordingly so that you don't miss the seminars you want to see. The seminars will happen in Plaza Suites 12 and 13 on the Plaza Suites level just above the Westminster Ballroom. 
On Saturday, July 21st, from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m., join Rob Watts from Court Electronics as he discusses the launch of this new product under the sheet that we can't show you yet. This product might very well be my personal choice for top audio product launch this year. Now, Rob will also provide a technical discussion of this fascinating new product, and it is a fascinating new product that is hiding under the sheet that I can't show you yet. Also on Saturday, July 21st, from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m., please join me as I discuss the HeadFi Measurement Lab. Over three years ago, HeadFi began building what is today one of the world's most advanced personal audio measurement labs. We'll discuss our ever-evolving measurement systems with instruments by Audio Precision, Gross, and Herzan, how various audio measurements are performed, key audio measurement challenges, and why measurements do and sometimes do not matter. On Sunday, July 22nd, from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m., Rob Watts will discuss the new Cord Electronics Hugo TT2. This Hugo TT2 is much more than a desktop version of the portable Hugo 2. Rob Watts will be talking about the new design and technologies behind the Cord Electronics Hugo TT2, how it differs from its portable sibling, including a presentation of the Hugo TT2's measured performance. Again, these seminars are only happening once each at CanJam London, and seating space is limited, so plan your schedule accordingly and make sure not to miss any of them. When it comes to portable digital audio players these last several years, I think what's excited most enthusiasts, myself included, is some of the extreme engineering these players have been loaded with. Some of the most exciting players have been big, sometimes heavy, super advanced players that strive to rival desktop components. Players like the Sony NWWM1Z, Astell & Kern and Ultima SP1000, Theo X7 Mark II. These are the types of players that I've been paying most mind to until now. The portable player that has stolen my heart and the hearts of a lot of other enthusiasts is many of the things that bigger, fancier players are, but something they're definitely not, and that's tiny. It's also very affordable. I'm talking about the new Shandling M0. Look at this thing. It reminds me of the old iPod Nano 6th generation in terms of its form factor, but the Shandling M0 does so much more than that old iPod ever could. The Shandling M0 is built around the ES9218P chip. It supports PCM up to 32384 and DSD64 natively with DSD128 support using D2P. It has a bi-directional USB-C connector so that it can serve as a USB DAC with a computer, but also as a USB transport for other DACs. It has two-way Bluetooth with support for Bluetooth playback via AAC, Aptex, and even LDAC. The M0 can output 80 milliwatts into 32 ohms and has an output impedance of only 0.16 ohm. There's no onboard memory, but the Shandling M0 will accept micro SD cards up to 512 gigs. Battery life is rated at 15 hours and has a 30-day deep sleep mode. All of this, and it measures only 45 by 40 by 13 and a half millimeters, and it weighs just 35 grams. Control of the M0, by the way, is via a small 1.54 inch touchscreen with gesture control. Now, a form factor this small and light opens up use cases and a level of portability that's currently unmatched in my experience. I love it. And of course, most importantly, the Shandling M0 sounds fantastic. Without a doubt, for me, the M0 is the most exciting portable digital audio player of this past year. So make sure not to miss the M0 and the rest of Shandling's products at their CanJam London exhibit. Odyssey will be at CanJam London, and they're going to have one of the most exciting, surprising products from a high-end headphone company in a very long time. I'm talking about their Mobius gaming headset, which we did an entire HeadFi TV episode about a few months ago. Now, given the preconceived notions that come to mind with audio enthusiasts, when the two words gaming and headset are strung together, I'm hesitant to use that phrase. To me, the Mobius is an affordable Odyssey closed-back planar magnetic headphone that's active only. It's driven at all times by a built-in balanced amp with up to one watt per channel output. Now, it can be driven and wired via a 3.5mm analog jack or using its built-in USB DAC via USB-C. It can also be used wirelessly as a Bluetooth headphone that supports LDAC for high-resolution wireless. It also has very advanced head tracking capabilities, and the enhanced out-of-head imaging you get with the head tracking is actually quite incredible. But don't worry, audio purists, this surround processing, it can be turned off. Okay, one might want to use the Mobius for gaming as well. And yes, they'll have Mobius's at CanJam London to demo, and it's an incredible piece of kit, so make sure to demo it. Odyssey will also have the just-announced Odyssey LCD2 closed back. I've not seen or heard this model yet, so CanJam will be my first time. Their description of it suggests that it builds on the classic LCD2 sound, but with a closed back design. If it does sound like that, I'm going to really dig it. So let's you and I both give it a listen at the show. Another new headphone that they'll be showing is this. This is the Odyssey LCD 4Z. The LCD 4Z was designed to be an easier to drive, and I mean much more efficient version of the Odyssey LCD 4. Now in terms of sound quality, the original Odyssey LCD 4 is one of the top tier of the top tier headphones. But it's a beast, physically the heaviest headphone I think we have here at HeadFi HQ. But if you opt for the magnesium chassis option, the LCD 4Z shaves quite a lot of weight off. I can wear it for hours, which I can't say about the original 4. Now I took this headphone with me to a 
recent Southeastern Michigan headphone meet, and it was a huge hit with those who gave it a listen. This 4Z is one of the top-tier Odysseys and a top-tier choice, period. Anyway, make sure to check out the Mobius, the LCD2 closed back, and the LCD 4Z, and the rest of the Odyssey lineup at CanJam London. Mr. Speakers will be at CanJam London, and I can't think of a manufacturer who's more lockstep with the HeadFi community's ethos, its spirit, than Dan Clark and his company, Mr. Speakers. While Dan has had a long history working in and around high-end audio, he started specifically with headphones as a DIYer, modifying headphones, and then, of course, modifying headphones as a business. I'm abbreviating a remarkable evolution here, but eventually Dan and his company developed their own drivers, developed their own chassis, entire headphones. From his beginnings as a HeadFi DIYer, Dan has built products in a company and Mr. Speakers that have earned the respect of some of the most seasoned, respected headphone engineers in the industry. I know this because they've told me themselves of their respect for the man and his products. Mr. Speakers has full research and development facilities using world-class measurement gear. They have a clean room at their offices. They have a state-of-the-art Clipple multi-parameter driver matching system. Now, I love seeing companies investing so heavily in their engineering. And Dan is the kind of engineer who will send me measurements of prototypes and products in the middle of the night because he lives and breathes this stuff. Having said all that, Mr. Speakers will be exhibiting their full lineup of headphones at the Electromod exhibit. So make sure to stop by and listen to the headphones that many engineers in the industry consider among the top audiophile benchmarks. I think by now many or most of you are familiar with Mr. Speakers' popular family of planar magnetic headphones, the Aeon and Ether headphones. The definitive Mr. Speakers show highlight, though, I'd have to say it's the electrostatic Mr. Speakers Voce. What an incredible headphone. Outside of Stax and Sennheiser, there are only a couple of companies who make world-class electrostats, and Mr. Speakers has just joined the ranks with the Voce. Now, in addition to all the engineering I've talked about, I also love that Mr. Speakers also understands functionality and style. Look at this remarkable case that comes with the Voce, which I think for most people, myself included, is far more useful than a flight case. This is a case I'd use every single day to store my headphones. It's obviously functional, keeping the headphones neatly tucked away on your desk with a nice pass-through slot for the cable. It also protects your headphones from dust, and then on top of that, it looks amazing, displaying your headphones beautifully. Anyway, make sure to listen to the electrostatic Voce and the rest of Mr. Speaker's headphones at CanJam London, and I think you'll then understand my respect and admiration for this small, dedicated California company. Campfire Audio has been firing on all cylinders these last several years. However, like I've said before, they've been anything but an overnight success. It's been 15 plus years of dedication, sacrifice, and organic growth. Now, I think I mentioned before that over the years, they've invested heavily in their internal research and development and engineering resources. Among other things, adding state-of-the-art test and measurement gear from Audio Precision and Gross to their facilities. We've been sharing measurements back and forth for some time now, and that's always illuminating and fun. At CanJam London, Campfire Audio will have what might very well be the most affordable must-hear recommendation in this entire preview video. I'm talking about new cloth ear pads for Campfire Audio's very popular Cascade over-ear headphones. The Campfire Audio Cascade was designed to be an audiophile quality on-the-go headphone for those who prefer a richer, meatier sound with a bass-emphasized spectral tilt. Now with the new ear pads, the bass you love is still there, but it's maybe a few decibels tamed and overall a bit airier. They also wear a bit cooler on hot days. Now, these new Cascade cloth ear pads just arrived, and I can't decide which I prefer. Since the ear pads take mere seconds to swap out, I've been carrying both sets around for the couple of days we've had them so far. If you're a Cascade owner, pick up the new ear pads. They're affordable, and they give you a voicing variation that doesn't abandon the central theme and strengths of the Cascade. If you've never heard the Cascade before, make sure to listen to it with both sets of ear pads. Campfire Audio will also have their two latest IEM models, the Comet and the Atlas, with their glorious drop forged stainless steel chassis. The Comet is the more affordable of the two. In my opinion, the Comet is one of the finest examples on the market right now of how much sound and fidelity can be extracted from a single balanced armature driver. It's a custom balanced armature driver coupled with Campfire's tuned acoustic expansion chamber design that they've used in their successful line of IEMs. I haven't heard such richness from a single armature IEM before. Also, make sure to listen to Campfire Audio's flagship IEM, the Atlas. Designed to improve on the wildly popular Vega, the Atlas has rich, densely layered tonality. If you want lean, definitely look elsewhere, as the Atlas's hallmarks are its impact and timbral richness. Now, inside, the Atlas uses a 10mm ADLC driver versus the Vega's 8.5mm such driver and an improved voice coil. Of course, Campfire Audio will have the rest of their product line up there, too. There are other IEMs, the ALO Audio line of cables and electronics, and more. Do not miss Campfire Audio's exhibit at CanJam London. 64 Audio will be at CanJam London, and they have several new models I haven't heard yet that I'm looking forward to hearing in London. There are two new, relatively affordable models in 64 Audio's custom IEM line, called the A3E and the A4T. Now, of the two, the A4T interests me a bit more, as the T in the name denotes the use of a TIA driver in it. Now, TIA stands for tubeless in-ear audio. 
I don't know any other manufacturer doing this. A TIA driver is a balanced armature driver with an enclosure that's opened up to allow the diaphragm to directly radiate. Now, this configuration eliminates the need for conventional sound tubes and dampers. What a TIA driver does require, though, is an acoustic chamber matched to it, and among other benefits, these chambers tune the drivers without introducing unwanted resonances. Some of their customs, but every single one of their current universal fit models, whether classified under stage, studio, or audiophile, use at least one TIA driver per side. Other new 64 Audio custom fit models that I want to hear include the A6T and the N8. It's actually pronounced Nate, as it's named after Grammy-winning bassist Nathan East. Now, both of these new custom fit models, like the new A4T, use one TIA high driver per side. So why am I so interested in TIA drivers? It's because, as I've said before, the best sounding IEM I've ever heard, other than Shure's electrostatic KSE 1500, is the 64 Audio TIA Forte. And the TIA Forte makes extensive use of 64's TIA technology, using not just one TIA high driver per side, but also a TIA mid-range driver on each side. Its total driver complement per side is one TIA high, one high mid, one TIA mid, one dynamic load driver, and a passive radiator. Now to get all these different driver types to coalesce into such a timbrely unified delivery, I mean, it sounds so convincingly to me like it could all be coming from a single source. I don't know how they do it, but they do. Now for as long as it rains with me as the top non-electrostatic IEM, I'll keep telling you that you need to give the TIA Forte a listen when you can. And while you're there doing that, make sure to check out the rest of the 64 Audio line at their CanJam London exhibit. When I was in China with Ethan a few months ago, I met Ms. Luo Man Hong and Mr. Wang Shuzheng of Shenzhen Audio. We visited their impressive main office and then also their fantastic retail location called Lei An Audio at the Huaxiang North Shopping Center. Lei An Audio was a shining example of the vibrant market for premium headphone audio in China. They had audio products from all over the world there. I wish we had stores like Lei An Audio around here. Now, when we visited Shenzhen Audio's main office, they'd scheduled a meeting for us with several of the Chinese audio manufacturers represented by Shenzhen Audio. Now, these manufacturers presented their products to us, many of which we'd never seen or heard previously. This was very exciting for us, as being around the industry for as long as we have been with HeadFi, it's not often we run into headphone audio companies and products we've never even heard of. Well, Shenzhen Audio decided to join us at CanJam London to share with us some of the companies and products they represent. I'm very excited about this. Make sure to visit Shenzhen Audio's exhibit to see and listen to products from Dart, which I believe is a sub-brand of Yulong, SMSL, and Matrix. Now, I think a few examples of the products they'll have at their exhibit are the Dart Yulong Aquila Balanced DAC Preamp and Headphone Amp, the SMSL DP3, which is a desktop hi-fi music player, and the Matrix X Saber Pro DAC. From what I've seen when searching online, these products seem to represent strong values at reasonable prices. Look at the internal shot of the X-Saber Pro DAX chassis. Anyway, make sure to stop by Shenzhen Audio's exhibit to listen to gear that may be as new to you as it is to me by companies like Dart Yulong, SMSL, and Matrix at CanJam London 2018. One of the headphones I've been watching with great interest is the upcoming Meza Audio flagship, the Planar Magnetic Empyrean. Now, this is a headphone that Meza has been spending painstaking effort to get right. Now, Meza will have their latest pre-production update of the upcoming Meza Empyrean, and I can't wait to hear it. In case you're not familiar with it, the Empyrean is a uniquely engineered headphone. Its diaphragm traces are divided into two distinct coil patterns. There's a spiral coil over the ear canal opening, more efficient at reproducing mids and highs, and placed above that is a switchback coil pattern that's more efficient at producing lower frequencies. Now, there are other unique components and designs in the Empyrean that we'll go over in more detail when it's in its final production form. They first started showing Empyrean prototypes publicly in February at CanJam New York, and they decided to keep iterating as much as is needed since then to optimize its sound, comfort, and assembly. As you can see in the photos, Meza has made numerous ear pads and carbon fiber headbands with different specs, including careful tuning of the headband caliper pressure, just to find the right fit and sound. Also, initially the Empyrean was supposed to be a limited production run headphone priced around $4,000, a sort of experiment to see how far they could push the engineering from their own team, as well as the engineers and researchers of their Empyrean development partner, Renaro. Now, given the response at the shows, though, from customers, dealers, distributors, they realize there's more demand for the Empyrean than they anticipated. So something else they've been working diligently on these last several months is refining their manufacturing processes to get the price of the Empyrean down without compromising it all on engineering. Now, I believe the Empyrean will come to market for around $3,000 and it will be the obvious flagship of Meza's product line, but not a limited run anymore. Also, while they've shown a lot of colorways, the Empyrean will launch in a beautiful gunmetal color. 
At CanJam London, Meza Audio will also be showing their upcoming premium universal fit IEM called the Rye Penta. In each fully CNC sculpted chassis are five drivers, two dual balanced armatures and one electrodynamic driver. Meza is aiming for a reference class balanced sound signature with natural tonality. Brian, who goes by Axel Chloris on our forums, heard a recent Rye Penta pre-production unit at Axpona a few months back. He said it sounded awesome. It was one of his highlights of that entire show. I must hear the Rye Penta in London. Anyway, make sure not to miss the Empyrean, the Rye Penta, and the rest of Meza Audio's product line at their exhibit. One More has received many awards and accolades, especially for their in-ear monitors, and they deserve them. Their flagship IEM, the One More Quad Driver in-ear, is my favorite of their IEMs. Now, on each side of the quad driver, the base and mid-range are handled by a dynamic driver with a DLC layer, DLC standing for diamond-like carbon. Two balanced armatures handle high frequencies, and a third balanced armature handles ultra-high frequencies. One More does a wonderful job tying all those drivers together to project a rich, coherent hull. Now, maybe at half the price, the triple driver in-ear is the better value. Actually, I don't know. It's a tough call on that one. But the quad driver in-ear in absolute terms is certainly the better of the two and a worthy One More flagship. And it's also a great value at its price. One more will also be showing their triple driver over-ear headphone. As the name suggests, there are three drivers per side in this headphone. That's certainly an unconventional design for an over-ear type headphone. There's one 40 millimeter graphene dynamic driver, one ceramic tweeter, and one bass reflector per side. The bass reflector is, I'm pretty sure, another name for a passive radiator, which, when properly implemented, can extend bass response. This headphone feels very well constructed, not surprising coming from one more. And to be clear, even though it has what looks like a grill here, this is a closed back headphone. There's just a transparent cover here under the grill. The triple driver over ear headphone has a bass emphasized sound signature, but is otherwise quite linear and balanced to my ears. For a smaller closed back over ear, it images very well too. This headphone is also quite efficient, which is very nice. Now make sure to audition the one more triple driver over ear, as well as the rest of one more's family of in-ear monitors and headphones at CanJam London. Biodynamic will be exhibiting at CanJam London 2018, and one area they've been excelling in the past couple of years is Bluetooth headphones. Now, when it comes to Bluetooth over-ear headphones for the past two years, the one I've been calling the best of the bunch in terms of resolution and overall fidelity is the Audio-Technica ATH DSR9BT. However, Biodynamic now takes over that spot with me with their outstanding new Amaron Wireless. Now, as audiophile wireless headphones go, the Amaron Wireless was done right. Its fundamental voicing was done 100% acoustically, not with EQ via a DSP. This means it maintains the same character whether used as a Bluetooth headphone or used as a wired headphone. Now there are many Bluetooth headphones out there that sound good when wireless thanks to DSP, but then sound atrocious when that DSP is shut off so that you can use it wired. Now with the Amaron Wireless switching from Bluetooth to being driven wired from the new Benchmark HPA4 for example, gave me more detail and resolution, but it did not change the overall character of the headphone, and I love that. From the standpoint of tonal bounce, the Amaron Wireless is one of those headphones that will likely find broad appeal. There's just enough bass emphasis to keep a sometimes audiophile bass head like me happy, and enough smoothness up top to also appeal to my tastes. It straddles signatures so gracefully that even someone who likes a flatter signature, or even a more shimmery presentation, will still likely find a lot to love about this headphone. To my ears, it's an excellent, very accessible tuning. Now, even though it was tuned acoustically, there is advanced DSP available within the Amaron Wireless. Through their partnership with Mimi Hearing Technologies, Biodynamics MIY mobile app, and MIY stands for Make It Yours, it can test your hearing and then adjust and tailor the headphone sound signature to help compensate and optimize its sound based on the results of the hearing test. Now, I only just started playing with this feature in the Amaron Wireless, and I'll say more about it down the road. Now, when you turn the MIY settings off, I want to be clear, the DSP goes away, and you're right back at the acoustically tuned Amaron Wireless. Perhaps just as important as all of this, the Amaron Wireless is very comfortable to me. I can wear it for hours, and with its rated 30-hour battery life, I can actually do that without interruption. Now, if you can't tell, I'm a big fan of this headphone. For my tastes, it's now the best-sounding Bluetooth over-ear I've yet heard, and with the bonus of being just as good in the role of a premium wired over-ear headphone. Make sure to hear the new Biodynamic Amaron Wireless and the rest of the Biodynamic lineup at CanJam London. Singapore-based Dita is a company whose in-ear monitors are popular with enthusiasts in the most sophisticated IEM markets in Asia, but still relatively less known with Western enthusiasts. I met the team from Dita some years back in Japan and have since had the pleasure of running into them at industry events all over the world. Theirs is a very sharp and passionate team. I don't think it'll be long before their reach into Western markets expands, especially if they keep releasing IEMs like these. 
Their flagship Dita Dream IEM has become somewhat of a unicorn. The Dream has never been easy to acquire and is perhaps even more challenging to get now. It's not even currently available on Dita's own web store. The Dream uses a single ultra-wide band with 10 millimeter driver per side that was developed specifically for this model. Now, unlike the Dita models that came before it, the richly voiced Dita Answer models, the flagship Dream has a more linear, more transparent mid-range. I'm not sure if they'll have the Dream at their exhibit, but if they do, make sure to hear it. I actually think, though, that I'm more excited by Dita's two latest IEM models that they call the Twins. One is called the Dita Fealty, and the other is called the Fidelity. The Twins, the Fealty and Fidelity, were largely informed by what Dita learned in making the Dream. They're more fraternal twins than identical ones, each having a clear familial tie, a kinship that's definitely more in line with the Dream than the Answer models, yet each having its own character. Now, this is an unusual approach by Dita to release two closely related models at the exact same time. That said, the combination between what makes the them similar and what differentiates them somehow makes it all make sense when you hear them both and especially if you're familiar with the dream. Now I actually prefer one of these fraternal twins to even Dita's flagship dream. I won't tell you which one but I tend to favor richer than flat tonality and detail with smoothness. Listen to the fidelity and fealty at Dita's Can Jam exhibit and then let me know which you prefer and why. Dita Audio is not the only company from Singapore making the trip to exhibit with us at CanJam London. Premium cable manufacturer Effect Audio and in-ear monitor maker Jomo Audio will also be making the trip from Singapore to exhibit at the show. Effect Audio's cables are among the most popular with the IEM Cognoscenti in some of the most sophisticated personal audio markets around the world. They're becoming increasingly popular in the growing Western high-end IEM markets too. Now, in fact, several IEM companies work with Effect Audio to package Effect's cables with their finest products. Empire Ears uses Effect Audio for some of their products, and the fantastic new Visioneers Earl Koenig is also equipped with a custom Effect Audio OCC silver cable. And Jomo Audio also includes Effect Audio cables with some of their premium models. At CanJam London, Effect Audio will be showcasing their Janus cable, which is their new flagship Palladium cable, as well as eight wired versions of their cables. Jomo Audio will be featuring IEMs using their new ACU technology, ACU standing for Airflow Control Unit. ACU allows the user to control the sound of the dynamic driver via interchangeable filters. Now, in their hybrid IEMs, the Airflow Control Unit controls the amount of air in the rear chamber of the dynamic driver. By fixing the volume for the rear chamber of the dynamic driver, they can make sure a given model of an IEM, whether custom or universal fit, or from custom to custom, will sound the same. The users of Jomo IEM models equipped with ACU will have four filter settings to choose from. Balanced, Musical, Energetic, and Impact. Balanced having the least amount of bass and impact the most. The range of adjustment is, I believe, around 15 decibels. Now, I think two models from Jomo's new Melange series hybrid IEMs will be shown that have ACU. One is called Quatre, which is French for four, with its four drivers, and one called the Deux, with two drivers. Now, I think both Effect Audio and Jomo Audio will continue to grow in popularity with enthusiasts all over the world, so make sure to visit them at CanJam London. Sonar Works will be at CanJam London demonstrating their TrueFi app, which is a very compelling piece of software. Now, Sonar Works has worked primarily in the Pro Studio world, and their Reference 4 Studio Edition software allows recording engineers to remove unwanted coloration from their studio monitor loudspeakers and headphones. That is, to achieve a target flat reference sound signature in the studio, and then to be able to have that same uncolored reference sound signature with them on their headphones. I've been in a Sonarworks corrected recording studio before and I was able to switch the correction in and out. It was a dramatic effect with the Sonarworks calibration process not just changing the tonal balance to a great degree, but also fixing a channel balance issue in the control room that was obvious to anyone with even mildly discriminating hearing. The Sonarworks TrueFi app is a very affordable version of the technology in their Reference 4 Studio Edition software. It allows you to instantly apply that same studio reference sound to any of 150 or so models of headphones that they've measured and offer target compensations for. Now they're working to measure and offer calibrations for 200 headphones by the end of the year. When you visit their exhibit, first ask them to give you a demo of a bad headphone being optimized by TrueFi, because the further away from the target the headphone is, the more dramatic the effect. I've done some demos with TrueFi that involved headphones I thought so bad as to be unlistenable that were made listenable by TrueFi. Now, I have TrueFi installed on all of my computers and use it with several of my headphones. Its effect can be beneficial even with outstanding headphones. Anyway, make sure to stop by the Sonarworks exhibit at CanJam London 2018. If you've never used TrueFi, I bet you'll be as amazed as I was the very first time I demoed it. And like I said, I have TrueFi installed on all of my computers now. I'm hard-pressed to think of headphones that have been more generally praised and well-reviewed in recent times than the Focal Clear. With a sonic character that I feel is a beautiful midpoint between the Focal Ilir and the Focal Utopia, the Clear is easy to fall in love with. Imagine the Ilir's punch, but more controlled. 
paired with a level of resolution that teases into Utopia territory and you're imagining the clear. Now, like its Focal flagship family members, the Focal Clear is a marvel of electrodynamic acoustical engineering, even adding improvements to its voice coil design versus its Elear sibling. And one advantage the Clear has over both of its siblings is in how it's packaged, which is to say very generously. The Clear is outfitted with beautiful sets of cables and an included custom carry case that's very, very slick. Anyway, make sure to check out the Clear as well as its flagship siblings, the Elear and the Utopia, at Focal's CanJam London exhibit. Now, the flagship Focal models aren't all Focal will have at CanJam London. They'll have some affordable in-ear monitors, like this Focal Sphere S model over here, that represent very strong values, even in such a competitive segment. Another nice headphone to check out at the Focal exhibit is the Focal Listen Wireless. I found that many Bluetooth headphones have more bass-emphasized, smoother signatures. That is, they can be fuller sounding and also more forgiving in nature. However, the Focal Listen Wireless is actually a bit more audiophile in signature than I've found to be typical of the category. The Listen Wireless skips active noise cancelling and has bass that's less emphasized and more linear than many in this class. Also, its treble has generous presence and shimmer. The Listen Wireless also supports Aptex, which is nice. Focal also recently announced three new colors under the name Focal Listen Wireless Chic. If you opt for one of the Listen Wireless Chic models, you can choose blue, purple, or my favorite, this gorgeous olive model. Anyway, make sure to check out the Focal flagships, the Elear Clear and Utopia, as well as Focal's IEMs and their wireless headphones at CanJam London. Focal is also one of the CanJam London 2018 sponsors, so thank you to Focal for supporting CanJam. Shit Audio's lineup will be on display at CanJam London 2018 at the Electromod exhibit, and they're going to have a whole pile of it there, probably the entire Shit Audio lineup. Now, with such a complete lineup of products, I thought I'd pick one highlight of many that I think is a must-hear product at CanJam. This is the new Shit Audio Lear 3 Hybrid Modular Headphone Amp and DAC. The Lear 3 is awesome. It's one of my favorite amps under $1,000. Now, the Lear 3 is not based on the previous Lear 2. It's a completely new design. It's a fully discrete, current mode, non-inverting 6SN7 bipolar hybrid with a constant transconductance output stage. The single-ended Lear 3 was designed to drive just about everything, from sensitive IEMs to the Hi-Fi Man Suzvara. It outputs up to 4 watts RMS per channel into 50 ohms, 6 watts RMS into 32 ohms, and 9 watts RMS into 16 ohms. Switch to low gain mode, and you've got the finesse to drive even sensitive IEMs, which I love having tube flavor available for. The Lear 3 also supports the same modules as the immensely popular Shit Audio Jotunheim, so you can outfit it with a Shit Audio DAC module or a Phono Stage module. I went with a DAC module. Now, this Lear 3 is specifically outfitted with Shit's new multi bit DAC module. I've been able to compare a Jotunheim with the standard DAC module directly to one with the new multi bit module, and the multi bit module was my clear preference, so that's what this Lear 3 has in it, too. I'm a decades-long tube amp enthusiast, and again, this latest tube hybrid from Shit Audio is one of my favorite sub-$1,000 amps on the market today. Now, while I used to find tube rolling fun, nowadays I simply don't have the time to do it, so I just went for the $25 Tungsol 6SN7 tube upgrade that Shit Audio offers, and I've been very, very happy with it. So, at Electromod's exhibit, make sure to hear the entire lineup of Shit Audio gear, but if you had to pick just one, my suggestion, the Shit Audio Lear 3. While you're at the Electromod exhibit, also make sure to check out Deconi Audio's products there. Deconi manufactures premium replacement ear pads for many models of headphones that may improve your headphones' comfort and can also improve the sound of your headphones. Deconi also makes replacement ear tips that fit many different models of IEMs, so check for those too. At CanJam London, you can take your headphones to Electromod's exhibit and try different Deconi Audio ear pads on them so that you can hear the differences for yourself. Since Deconi will have a measurement set up there, you'll even be able to do before and after measurements to compare the effects of swapping ear pads. Make sure to go to Deconi's website at deconiaudio.com to see if they have ear pads that fit your favorite headphones and ear tips for your IEMs. If you don't feel like bringing your own headphones to CanJam London, I imagine there'll be plenty of headphones on hand for you to try with Deconi's ear pads at Electromod's exhibit. And by the way, Deconi Audio recently developed and released replacement ear pads for the Focal flagship line, the Focal Ilear, Utopia, Clear, and LX headphones. Anyway, make sure to check out Shit Audio and Deconi Audio at CanJam London 2018. In the world of premium headphone audio, Headamp Audio Electronics is old school, dating back to the days around the time HeadFi.org was founded. And when I say old school, I mean that in all the best ways. And not just in terms of spirit or history, but also in terms of the artisanal methods and circuits with which they craft their amps. Now, while it could be said that what Headamp is best known for in our community is their multi-kilobuck ultra-high-end electrostatic amp, the Headamp Blue Hawaii SE, I think the other main gem in their line is this. This is the Headamp Gilmore Light Mark II. 
and each and every one of the 500 bucks you're going to pay for this amp is going to a headphone amplifier because that's all it is. There's no DAC in here. The Gilmore Light Mark II's amplifier section is fully discreet. It actually uses the same circuit as their flagship dynamic amp, the GSX Mark II. They describe its circuit as a low-noise JFET input with a pure Class A bipolar transistor output. Outputting up to 1.5 watts of pure Class A power, the Gilmore Light Mark II is versatile, able to quietly drive in-ear monitors and authoritatively drive full-size headphones. I've mostly been using it with the new Sennheiser HDA20 and it's a gorgeous pairing. If you like smooth, detailed delivery against a black backdrop, but you'd rather not go the vacuum tube route, then the Gilmore Light Mark II is as good an amp at under $1,000 as I've used. Now don't spend a penny more than $500 on a dedicated headphone amplifier until you've at least heard the Gilmore Light Mark II and you'll be able to do that at CanJam London. Of course, at HeadAmps Exhibit, make sure to also listen to the Blue Hawaii SC electrostatic amp driving the Stax electrostatic flagship headphones and the Mr. Speaker's Voce. The Blue Hawaii and those electrostatic headphones represent among the very best sounding headphone systems at any price. If you want to hear the in-ear monitor that's still the best sounding earphone I've ever heard, then stop by the Shure exhibit at CanJam London. At the show, Shure will have their latest full range electrostatic in-ear system, the Shure KSE 1200 system. The KSE 1200 system was announced just a couple of months ago at the Fujia AVIC Tokyo Headphone Festival. We also posted an entire episode of HeadFi TV about it, so please check it out if you haven't already. Now the Shure KSE 1200 system uses the exact same Shure KSE 1500 electrostatic earphones as the KSE 1500 system. In fact, the new KSE 1200 system is essentially identical to the KSE 1500 system, but without the DAC and equalizer, with more battery life and priced a thousand bucks lower, it's also a little bit smaller. The amp section and the earphones are exactly the same. For those of you who haven't watched our HeadFi TV episode about the KSE 1500 system from two or three years back, please do that as we go over the product in some detail. Again though, regardless of price, form factor, or category, the KSE 1500 full range electrostatic earphones in either of these systems remains the best sounding IEM I've ever heard. Now make sure not to miss Shure's whole product lineup at CanJam, but definitely make sure you at least listen to the KSE 1500 earphones, whether they're in the KSE 1500 system or in the KSE 1200 system. They sound the same, and so they're equally amazing. For years, Sean Olive and his colleagues at Harman International have been doing research to determine the preferred target frequency response curves for over-ear headphones, on-ear headphones, and in-ear headphones. Even in our enthusiast community, many of those who are interested in the discussion of headphone measurements and research have become so familiar with the work of these teams led by Sean that one of their earlier headphone target response curves is referred to simply as the Olive Welty curve. Now, for those of you not familiar with their work, simply put, for over-ear headphones, the research has shown that the more preferred headphones tend to have a smooth, extended frequency response that approximates an accurate loudspeaker's in-room response. Additionally, in their more recent research on in-ear headphones, they found that the preferred target response curve has about 4 decibels more bass than the preferred target response curve for over-ear headphones. Now, this is their latest over-ear target response curve. And this is their in-ear target response curve. I'm definitely not alone in thinking the research that Sean and his team at Harman have been doing will prove very important to the industry, and I do think some headphone companies have paid mind to their findings already. Ironically though, the companies under Harman International, including AKG and JBL, had not specifically taken these targets and applied them to their own headphone products exactly as published in the studies by Sean and his team. Well, now they have. Specifically, they've applied the Harman in-ear target curve to the latest AKG flagship in-ear monitor, this, the AKG N5005. How did it turn out? Well, my tonal balance preferences are rather consistent with Harman's research, so I think the new AKG N5005 sounds outstandingly good. The AKG N5005 is a five driver hybrid, each high gloss black ceramic earpiece having one 9.2 millimeter dynamic driver and a set of quad balanced armature drivers. While it's designed to meet the Harman in-ear target curve, the N5005 still allows for some sound customization with four filters you can swap out. It comes installed with the reference sound filter, but the three others are bass boost, mid high boost, and high boost. The N5005 is also one of the best packaged headphones I've yet seen. It comes with an excellent carrying case and three very nice cables. One terminated in a standard mini plug with inline remote, one 2.5mm balanced cable, and even an Aptex capable Bluetooth neck cable. It also comes with a nice variety of ear tips, but the ones that work best for me with the N5005 are the Comply TX500 tips, and these weren't included. Anyway, if you were wondering if the Harman headphone target curves are consistent with your preferences, you'll have a chance to hear the research of Sean Olive and his team applied with the AKG N5005 at AKG's exhibit at CanJam London 2018. 
final will be exhibiting at Can Jam London 2018, and they'll have a lot for you to listen to there. But there's no doubt that this, their planar magnetic headphone, the final D8000, this, in my opinion, is the biggest must here at their exhibit and one of the headphone highlights of the show, period. My friend Vlad Savov of The Verge, he loved the sound of the D8000, saying in his review of it that the D8000 have an amazingly detailed, balanced, and dynamic sound signature. There's not much that's laid back about them as every bass drop and every high note is registered with emotive impact, but they never stray into being harsh or unpleasant. I agree with Vlad completely. This is one of those headphones with a signature that I've found to have near universal appeal. HeadFi staffer Axel Chloris and I will often disagree about which headphones we like and don't like, he preferring a healthy dose of treble and more neutral, flattish bass response, while I tend to prefer headphones richer in tone with strong bass impact and smoother treble presentation. Now, despite that, the D8000 somehow appeals very strongly to both of us. Now, like I said, this is one of those rare headphones with quite a universal appeal. I recently took the D8000 with me to a southeastern Michigan meet, and to say the least, it was very well received there. Years ago, when Final first told me they were working on a planar magnetic headphone, I wasn't quite sure what to think. But with each successive prototype, it got better and better. Now this prototype here, one of the last ones I heard before production, this is just barely enough to hold the drivers in place, but even this prototype sound quality is approaching this one. Now I took this prototype with me to a New York HeadFi meet a couple of years ago, and not surprisingly, those who heard it were impressed. The final D8000 is a physically heavy headphone to be sure, but not too heavy for my scrawny neck. However, those of you who are very sensitive to headphone weight might feel differently. That said though, in terms of sound, in terms of fidelity, the D8000 is one of the finest sounding planar magnetic headphones you can buy at any price right now in my opinion. Now don't miss the final D8000 and the rest of Finals products at CanJam London 2018. V-Moda will be exhibiting at CanJam London and they'll be showing their new V-Moda Crossfade 2 Wireless Codex Edition. Now the difference between the Crossfade 2 Wireless and the Crossfade 2 Wireless Codex Edition is that all of the Codex Edition colors feature AAC and Aptex for higher resolution Bluetooth playback. Now the Crossfade 2 Wireless is without a doubt to my ears the best sounding V-Moda over-ear headphones they've made so far. Like all V-Moda headphones there is bass emphasis but it's more subdued than other V-Moda over-ear models, more in line with audiophile sensibilities especially for those who have bass head audiophile tendencies like I sometimes do. Now what I love about this headphone is that it was tuned acoustically. This means its tonal signature is the same whether wireless or wired and I really really like that. Now what do I also dig about V-Moda's over ears? The personalization options. Now this is a matte black V-Moda Crossfade 2 wireless codex edition in stock form and here's our codex edition customized with the HeadFi logo. Now I love the way it turned out. I'm sure you can get more creative than I did here but customization is an awesome option to have. Also make sure to listen to the V-Moda Forza Metallo Wireless, which is a neckband styled Bluetooth wireless IEM. And it also has Aptek support, by the way. Now the Forza Metallo Wireless has even more subdued bass than perhaps any other V-Moda headphones, but still with some emphasis. So it's perhaps the most linear sounding, most audiophile friendly V-Moda of them all. Now the Forza Metallo Wireless also has a nano coating for sweat and weather resistance, so it's a great exercise headphone too. Now as neckband form factor earphones go, I also love the curved titanium neckband. It rests really nicely on the shoulders, low profile enough that you can hide it under a shirt collar if you want. Anyway, make sure to check out V-Moda's exhibit to see the Crossfade 2 Wireless Codex Edition, the Forza Metallo Wireless, and the entire V-Moda lineup at CanJam London. Visioneers will be exhibiting at CanJam London with their first ever Universal Fit IEM, the Earl Koenig. Now until the Earl Koenig, Visioneers had only made custom fit IEMs. Now they showed the Earl Koenig at CanJam Singapore back when it was still in pre-production form, clad in the type of camouflage typically reserved for top secret car prototypes. It was a fun, brilliant, over-the-top campaign, but it delivered. They sent us a prototype to listen to ahead of Singapore and it was outstanding. But what we heard then and at CanJam Singapore was only just a taste. Because what we heard then was just one of four user-selectable signatures that the production Earl Koenig would offer. The Visioneers Earl Koenig has 13 balanced armatures per side, four of them for bass, four for mids, four for highs, and one super tweeter. Again, there are four user-selectable voicings available with the Earl Koenig, and it's quite easy to change voicing. You just turn a rotary switch under the easily removable face plates with an included tool. And by the way, the voicings are as follows. Setting one is called powerful bass and has the drivers configured to deliver max bass, max mids, and max highs. Setting two is called moderate bass with reduced bass by minus five dB, max mids, and max highs. Setting three is called super highs and in this setting the bass is reduced to minus 8 dB with max mids and max highs and setting 4 is called forward mids and is the same as setting 3 through the mids but with the highs reduced 3 decibels. Now my preference early on is for setting 2 moderate bass with the occasional switch to setting 3 super highs. 
It's early days, but the Earl Koenig is squarely in the ballpark of the best IEMs I've heard. In the class of the 64 Audio Tia Forte, the Shure KSE 1500, the Odyssey LCD i4, and a couple of others. Now I'll give it more time and more music to really flesh out my feelings of the Earl Koenig, but there's no doubt it's a world-class piece. While the Earl Koenig is made in Germany, the Earl Koenig earpieces are crafted in Japan, sculpted of solid silver, and then shipped to Germany. The bespoke cables are by Effect Audio from Singapore, also made of solid silver, Ono Continuous Cast Silver. So this IEM is a bit heavy, and as you can imagine, it's pricey too, among the most expensive of the currently available IEMs. That said, the Earl Koenig has packaging befitting a king, but thankfully and more importantly, the sound to match in my early impressions. Now the Earl Koenig is my first experience with Visioneer's IEMs, and it makes me wonder what their custom my EM sound like, so I won't miss those at the show. Make sure you don't miss the Earl Koenig and the rest of the Visioneers line at CanJam London. Benchmark Media will be featured at the SCV exhibit, and they have a very exciting new headphone amplifier called the Benchmark HPA4 that they'll be showing. What makes this so exciting is that the Benchmark HPA4 is based on the THX AAA headphone amp technology that I've talked about before. AAA stands for Achromatic Audio Amplifier, by the way. We've now measured a few variants of the THX AAA amp, and they're the lowest distortion, lowest noise amps we've yet measured. A few companies have licensed the THX AAA circuit, but the first couple of AAA-based products were more affordable, and they did not use the flagship of the THX AAA variants, which is the dual mono THX AAA 888. Benchmark's HPA4 does use the THX AAA 888 in a maxed out implementation that Benchmark went to great lengths to optimize, especially with respect to the HPA4's volume control. Now, for many amps, the volume control is the weak link in the chain, where performance and transparency is most apt to be lost. To prevent this, Benchmark developed and introduced a control that uses four 256 step relay controlled attenuators and four 16 step relay controlled boost amplifiers. This provides two fully independent, fully balanced stereo volume controls one for the line output and one for the headphone output, with a control range of plus 15 decibels to minus 122 decibels in half decibel steps. Now these volume controls feature high precision metal film resistors, gold contact relays, and fully buffered inputs and outputs. In short, Benchmark sought to develop a volume control that exceeds the THX AAA 888 specifications to avoid being the weak link in the chain. They posted an application note detailing this volume control, which you should go to their website and read. Okay, all that said, how well does it work? We just received the HPA4, but a quick listen shows this amp to be very revealing, and while I would not call it forgiving, it's also definitely not harsh. My early impression is that I really like the HPA4. Now, in terms of its measured performance, indeed you can see in these measurements that the Benchmark HPA4's noise floor rides just atop that of the quietest audio analyzer currently available, and that's the Audio Precision APX555 that we use here at HeadFi HQ. The HPA4 also has vanishingly low distortion. Now, once I get back to the office after CanJam, I'm looking forward to spending a lot more time with the HPA4 with a wide variety of headphones and sensitive earphones. I also want to do more measurements. So when you go to SCV's exhibit and listen to the Benchmark HPA4, it could reasonably be said that you'll be listening to what may currently be the most measurably transparent headphone amplifier currently made. So make sure not to miss the Benchmark HPA4 at CanJam London. Well, that was a lot of gear and some groovy product launches, and it's still just a taste of what you'll be able to hear and see at CanJam London. Again, that's happening July 21st and 22nd, 2018 at the Park Plaza Westminster Bridge Hotel in central London. Since there was no way to show you everything that'll be at the show, scrolling on your screen now is a list of all the companies who'll be exhibiting at CanJam London this year. Now, we've got a flight to catch, so I better run. For those of you attending, I can't wait to see you there. And for those of you who can't make it, we'll see you on the forums at headfi.org. 